Do we know what river this is? Columbia River. Columbia. That's a big one. Right? Yeah. Roll on Columbia. Isn't that the one that uh, Lewis and Clark spent a lot of time around? That's right. Yeah. Searching, kind of like me in my golf game. Wow. Searching. Great intro. River. What is Gamble Sands? Gamble Sands is a golf course. I guess that's a, a good place to start. Gamble Sands is a golf course in central Washington in a town called Brewster. It is not near Seattle, not near Spokane, which is on the eastern border with Idaho. It is somewhere in between in a small town, really in the, in the Wild West. I think Gamble Sands is interesting because the story of Gamble Sands is the story of destination golf. You know, 15, 20 years ago, if you wanted to build a golf course, you would go to where the people were. You'd go to where you could start a housing development. That's how you would plan out your golf course. But something has changed in the last 15 years. If you think about golf courses that have made waves, they're remote. They're Bandon Dunes, they're Sand Valley in Wisconsin, they're Cabot Links in Nova Scotia, they're Stream Song in the middle of Florida. And so what makes those courses special is not that they are in population centers, it's the opposite. It's that they're adventures, that they're off the beaten path. And getting there, that's part of the fun. So actually a good city can be a real X factor because if you've got a good city and you're waiting for your buddies to fly in or it's a place you're going to spend an afternoon or an evening, either the front or back end of a trip, obviously that can be a game changer. In this case, from Seattle, it's about three and a half hours, um, which is just the right amount to really be able to do and play golf that same day. And in that drive from Seattle to Gamble Sands, you experience a lot of stuff. I mean, on my drive to Gamble Sands, literally over a mountain pass, you're seeing snow, you're seeing orchards, lakes, rivers. Uh, you get a little bit of everything and you have that full transformation from metropolitan tech hub city of Seattle, which sits right on the water to the set of Yellowstone is what it feels like. You've got tumbleweeds rolling, you've got massive cattle operations, farming operations. If it's a destination, if it's a remote destination that you want, whether it's what you want or not, it's what you've got. There's a funny thing that the guys in the pro shop told us actually. They get calls a lot from people that have finally gotten close. They've made this drive and then they call the pro shop and they're like, Hey, we're lost. We've been on the driveway and then, you know, we must have taken a wrong turn. How do we how do we get to you guys? And the pro shop will say, No, no, you're you're on the right track. Just keep driving. There's nothing else on this road. Keep driving to the end. You'll see the golf course. You literally can't miss it. And sure enough, if you have faith, Gamble Sands will appear before you. It's like coming to a new world when you come from Seattle. How often are you making the trek? Uh, probably like twice a year. The terrain, the soil, the turf, everything about playing in eastern Washington is very different from Seattle or western Washington. We're up under kind of the bluffs and the rocks. There's uh, the Columbia River down low. We're surrounded by orchards. Um, there's been some wildfires over the last couple years, the burn that came up to the course. And so um, just a really unique kind of experience. The next ingredient, the most obvious, is the golf course. In building the original 18 holes, they brought in David McClay Kidd, who is the OG of Destination Golf. He designed the first Band and Dunes course. And at Gamble Sands, he really dialed up the fun factor. Basically what he did is created a course with a bunch of memorable, fun 
challenging but tackleable golf holes. Um, take the first long par four, really long from the back tees, and it's visually intimidating. It looks where when you tee off like who knows how much space there is out there. Turns out there's a lot more than you think, and that's a theme of the day. Um, he messes with your eye, but David McClay, kid, he's a forgiving fella out here. The Columbia River is pretty epic. Number two is a terrific short par four. There's a centerline bunker that could snatch your ball up and bring, I don't know, bogey, double, X into play. But you can also, if you clear that bunker, you can get on the screen and one. You can be putting for eagle. Um, and there is this infinity green where the green kind of slopes off directly into the view. And if you look off the back of that green, you see apples and orchards for miles. They stretch out over the Columbia River. And the fact that it's just the second hole of the day, you feel like you're already reaching the signature spot. Um, there's number six, which is a par three that has this ski slope on the right side that you can hit your ball 50, 60 yards right of the flag and end up on the right target. Makes me think of, they did a study in baseball this year and they were trying to figure out, okay, how do we make baseball more fun? And they did some research. They said, well, fans think that it's the most fun when the ball is in play, when the runners are running around the bases. You know what the most fun hit in baseball is? The most fun play is a triple because the ball's moving around, the guy's running around, the, the ball on the ground, the stuff in motion, that's the best part of sports. When the ball is rolling on the ground, that's the most fun part of golf. And slopes at some courses can mean really unfriendly things. At Gamble Sands, that happens sometimes, but maybe two out of three times, really good. your ball is gonna take a slope and funnel towards a, a place that you're glad it's going rather than the alternative. So even though it's this signature challenging golf course, there are people that'll go from Seattle and play it for, you know, first or second time and come back saying, oh yeah, I shot my best career score there. Because if you're a big hitter um, and if you get contained by, you know, some of these bowling alley golf courses of the Pacific Northwest with giant trees that you end up behind, Gamble Sands, you're not going to have that same claustrophobic issue. It's the opposite of claustrophobia. Uh, I played really well. Yeah. Best round in over a year. What's your What's your handicap and what did you shoot today? My current index is a seven. I shot 69 today. <laughs> is that the best round of your life? It matches my low score. That's so good. Gosh, that's pure. What is it about Gamble Sands that allows a seven handicap to shoot two under par, three <laughs> under par? Yeah. There are places to miss it, and having played it as a seven handicap, you know, close to 10 times, I kind of know where to miss it, and it, that just frees everything up. But allowing those types of misses uh, and providing some give off the tee box and in the approach, when you can lag putt it, you can go low. Wow. Do you have a favorite hole on Gamble Sands? Uh, my favorite hole is 14. It's a real thinker. Uh, it's got a ravine that runs up the middle. Uh, the fairway on the left, it's like the obvious choice because it's closer, but it's narrow, it's small, and it actually is a tough angle into the green. If you really smash one out to the right into the safer fat part of the fairway, you're gonna have, a, a, I think, a pretty good angle at it. And so it's a super fun hole. What's your favorite hole? I think I gotta go with eight. I, I set it out while we were out there. It just looks like it's from Scotland. It also looks like number 11 at Bandon before they removed some bunkers. And it, it just plays lovely for a lefty with a cut, honestly. On the 18th tee, great former champion, Sean Zock. So you finish at number 18, uh, which has the yardage of a long par five. But again, if you catch the right slope um, 
I was going to say on a firm day, but I imagine literally every day is a firm day out there. Your ball will roll and roll until you've got a mid iron left, even though the hole can play almost 600 yards. And then you've got the clubhouse in the, the background. You know, it's like you're getting back to the ranch after a hard day's work. There it is waiting for you, a cheeseburger and a beer. If you just put it on the green, two putt, head to a happy space. Destination golfers are a relatively simple people, I would like to say, but I think we've gotten more demanding over the years. And so it's actually not enough to just have 18 great holes anymore. So luckily there is more to do. If you book your time right, you will be able to go play quicksands, which is the 14 hole short course. It is spectacular. It's If the slopes are big on the big course, they're proportionally even bigger, even more extreme, because this is a short course. There are no rules. You don't have to conform to anything. You can have a slope next to the green that's three times the size of the green. You can roll from the back of the green all the way off the front of the green, and it won't take you that long to play it, but you should account for it, because whether it's before the round as a warm-up and a fun tune-up, or after the round, you grab a beer and a couple clubs and you head out there, it's just such a fun compliment to the big course. So. We are on the fifth hole at Quicksands. I'm told this is the first hole in one in course history. Let's check it out. Wow. Lo and behold. Hey. Title is four, the same ball I'm playing. Crazy. There's the putting course. It's called the Cascades Putting Course. And this sits right behind your room. Um, Gamble's got some pretty ideal lodging, just the basics, but I mean, you get this combination where if you, if you play your cards right, you're going to fall asleep with your door cracked, some fresh air coming in your room, and the sound of some folks still night putting on the Cascades putting course. And then you're going to wake up, open up your door, look out into the rising sun coming up over that Columbia River over the putting course it feels like there's no way you could have anything but a good day i was lucky enough to talk to david mcclay kid for a story about bandon dunes once and that's what he pointed out is for golfers a destination course is as close to really being out in nature as some people might get and they're going to get in touch with their inner cowboy. They're going to experience being on the out trail. on the frontier and and messing around in the high desert of Gamble Sands and Brewster, Washington and not being distracted by the day-to-day -day hassles of regular life, of being in the city. Like, that's the whole point. You get out there and you immerse yourself. In the case of our trip, though, brought some absolute gems. Of course, there was Sean Zock. Uh, my podcast co-host, partner in crime at Golf Magazine. <sighs> Thinning everything. It looked thin and straight, though. That'll play. <laughs> Six thin shots in a row. Something is wrong. How and we took you? on the Seattle duo of Russell and Jordan, a couple guys that are on the golf scene in Seattle. They are gems. They are the perfect people for a golf trip because really what you want on a golf trip are people with enthusiasm for life for getting out there and doing stuff uh, for getting in in the mix and a little competition on the course unfortunately their enthusiasm here extended to just beating the hell out of me and Sean on the course down for us <laughs> Anytime you have a six handicap shooting 69, that's going to be a problem. Uh, and in this case, it was a problem. They went up early. Another beautiful lag putt. They were up big in the middle, and I was going to say they were up big late, but the match was over by then. Magazine. So, five. Not doing much. Down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever been five down my entire life. If there was any consolation, we didn't suffer. It was 
It was just a drubbing start to finish. Six down and... Six down and ride. Are you having fun? I'm having a blast. Are you? Oh yeah. Right. Oh my god, go in. Oh, great run. There's a real temptation to speed golf up, right? And I think that's a good thing. I think that there's there's beauty in fitting golf into people's lives where you can into making courses that are smaller and quicker and making the, the pace of play faster. That's all good stuff, but that's a birdie. There's something elemental to being out in a destination golf course where you're choosing to slow life down and have yourself a beer and, and enjoy the fact that you've made this time to be out there, to soak in that fresh, fresh air, to play some golf, challenge yourself, bring some buds that are excited to be out there with you. That's the beauty of it. It's gonna reflect back to you what you bring to it. Golf course is a mirror. And at Gamble Sands, it's it's a pretty good one. <laughs>